yes, Brazil. We all know about Brazil. Celebrated for its samba, famous for its footballing flair, and of course, renowned for its rugby. É uma bola de futebol americano. Futebol americano. Futebol americano. Futebol americano. Rugby. Como é que é rugby? É... Não, não sei nada de rugby. Ai meu Deus, eu não sei muito de jogo de rugby. Não é muito conhecido aqui no Brasil rugby. Ninguém pratica muito. Well, maybe not so much just yet, but as Rio de Janeiro prepares to host the 2016 Olympic Games, the city will play a pioneering role in the future of the sport when they stage the first ever Olympic event in Rugby Sevens. The city's Diodoro Park is the place which, in just 24 months' time, is expected to be alive with up to 20,000 rugby fans who have followed their teams through the HSBC Sevens World Series, from Dubai to Hong Kong, London to Las Vegas, and Wellington to Tokyo. But they'll be joined by thousands more who are getting to know the game here in Brazil for the first time, and by millions more on TV. Nada detém o nosso rugby. Em 2003, ficamos em quinto no Sul-Americano, enquanto a Argentina em primeiro. Neste ano, ficamos em quarto e a Argentina em primeiro. Isso mostra o franco progresso do Brasil, enquanto a Argentina se mantém estagnada na mesma posição. TV commercials have been using humor to spread the message that rugby is coming to Brazil. Coincidência? Não. Não. We do a lot of work with the Brazilian Rugby Union across the country in terms of development programs and high performance programs. But I think when you can come into an area like this in Rio where the Olympic Games will be held and where we'll make our first appearance with Rugby Sevens on the Olympic stage, I think it's important to engage with the local community. I think you have to make it fun. You've got to keep it simple. I mean, if you look at the kids here, all they want to do is throw a ball around and run around. So it's just trying to put a little bit of structure, bring, bring some simple games so they can have some fun. Um, so it's, it's really about getting them interested and enjoying the sport. In the meantime, an advanced guard of rugby royalty has made its way here to introduce young Brazilians to the sport, and their officers' credentials are second to none. The National Rugby Board has recruited the Serevi organization to replicate their work in U.S. schools with a series of sessions here in Brazil. I see the main thing of things that we're doing is trying to get uh, kids to have fun. And that was the main thing. We see a lot of talent and uh, the key thing is that they really enjoyed and they thought that we we're going to keep going until 9 o'clock in the evening. And I said, no, we have to stop before 7 but uh, before eight, so that was uh, what we did and uh, it was really exciting. Having seen England converts football and rugby pretty well and I think exactly the same here, yeah. and as you alluded to with the Olympics and the inclusion there, it's, it's, a, it's a real springboard that Brazil can, can jump off and, and get involved in, in, in such a high level of rugby. You know, they wouldn't have had the chance with the World Cup because you've got to qualify, but they're here, it's in their hometown, in their home country, what better place to be. The second session takes place in one of the city's biggest favelas. The older player among the recruits is Diego Martin, an actor who himself grew up in a favela to become one of the country's most popular TV soap stars. I always coloco como uma grande referência a minha história, é, como a arte mudou minha vida e acho que como o esporte muda a vida de muita gente daqui de dentro. Acho que projetos como esse, iniciativas como essas, elas têm que ser serem adotadas em todo o país, não só nas comunidades do Rio, mas sim como em todas as comunidades do país, porque realmente o esporte, a educação e a cultura, elas mudam a cabeça do, do jovem de comunidade. In part two, we'll meet the women who'll be aiming for gold in front of a home crowd in Rio and the Brazilian brothers with a passion for rugby.
Brazilian women have been at the forefront of one of the more recent phenomena of the Olympic Games, beach volleyball. Now their compatriots have a chance to switch the country on to rugby, as the competition has been included for both men and women. The IRB Women's Sevens World Series has seen the Brazilian team compete in Dubai, Atlanta and here on home soil in the heat of Sao Paulo. And leading the charge is the team captain with a talismanic reputation, Julia Sada. How proud does it make you feel to be wearing the Brazilian jersey and playing for the country? Uh, my dream as a kid was to represent my country. I did athletics for 10 years and I couldn't reach there. And rugby gave me this opportunity and it's like always a pleasure. When I put the jersey, I become stronger, faster and that's it. Playing here on home soil for the first time, what was that whole experience, what, what has that experience been like for you and the team? Uh, it's, it was more important for all like the girls that play in Brazil, that don't represent Brazil, to see like, oh, this is international rugby, this is what I want to become. You know, I think it's going to grow, uh, the rugby here in Brazil, more girls want to play, their families are here to watch, say, oh, this is the sport that you play, this is very good, and you guys have a good team, so I think it will improve a lot and will help us to grow. And of course, the Olympics is coming to Brazil. How far do you think this team can go to be ready for, for, for the Olympics in the next two years? We are training really, really hard. We have like new coaches, one from New Zealand, one from France, and they are helping us a lot to understand again. Before it was like just for fun, creativity, let's just play a little sidestep, and now we are studying a lot. We, if we like, know how to play the game plan. When we get, play the game plan, we just play fantastic. When we miss, it's like, oh my God, what's <laughs> going on? But when we like have more consistency, I think these 12 girls can go forward. We've heard from the women, but what about the men? Overlooking the tourist hotspot of Ipanema Beach lies Contagolo, one of the numerous favelas in Rio de Janeiro. Here, where soccer rules the roost, there's a quartet of brothers bucking the trend in favour of a more oval-shaped ball. How did you first start playing rugby growing up here? A gente não começou aqui, né, Laís? Na praia, sim. Porque um amigo meu morava aqui e, curiosidade minha, eu perguntei o que ele fazia na praia. Ele me falou que jogava rugby. Aí eu fui perguntei o que é rugby. Ele falou, pô, vamos lá, vou te mostrar o que é. Ele me chamou para treinar. Primeiro dia eu não quis, porque achei um esporte violento, né? Achei que o cara, um cara agarra o outro. Eu falei, não é comigo não. Na semana seguinte eu fui lá, fiquei olhando, aí me chamaram de novo para treinar, eu fui. Aí treinei e joguei e estou aí até hoje. So we're here in your home. Can you show me around? Can you show me the gym that you have just behind you here? Yeah, yeah. É, isso aqui foi uma, uma loucura minha mesmo, porque como eu, eu jogo rugby já há um tempo, e eu queria ficar forte, queria crescer. Aí eu fiz isso aqui de, de concreto, para quem sabe eu crescer um pouquinho, né, que eu não, tinha, não tenho condições de pagar academia. Aí veio na cabeça que eu tinha que fazer. Aí eu fiz aqui, e fiz tipo uma campa, fazer o supino também, tinha paralela isso. E aqui é o espaço onde a gente faz festa, convida a família toda, amigo, os pessoal do rugby também aparece aqui para curtir com a gente. Has it given you um, a life, a different life than the one you might have had if you didn't find rugby? Eu cresci sempre fiz, fiz esporte, entende? Sempre fiz esporte dos seis até tá um ano assim. E eu conheci o rugby com 11 anos. Tipo, joguei basquete. Fiz capoeira, fiz um monte de esporte assim. E o rugby, tipo, me acolheu bem melhor, bem melhor que os outros esportes. Entende? Eu sabia. Muitas pessoas, muitas crianças também crescem aqui na comunidade que não tem cabeça para nada para fazer esporte. E fica achando que já é, né? Moleque da vida, mas não. A educação que meu pai e minha mãe deu pra gente foi seguir o que é certo e deixar o que é errado para trás. E o rugby também, cara. Ajudou a gente o quê? Não ficar só na favela. Ele tira a gente daqui, do, da comunidade também. Here's another man with a passion for rugby. 
Ryan Ornelas. He's editor of the country's first rugby magazine. A revista surgiu através de um sonho meu e do meu pai. A gente, eu joguei há muito tempo no passado, meu pai jogou também. E a gente falava assim, por que, que não tem nenhuma revista que fala disso? Por que, que algumas mídias sociais falam do rugby, mas faltava uma coisa concreta, uma coisa que a gente se né, palpável. Então eu falei, tivemos esse sonho com a ajuda do pessoal do meu clube, que a gente cresceu jogando também. Falou, vamos fazer? Ah, e fizemos. Falou, vamos fazer, vamos fazer. E fizemos. E aí a gente espera que ah, isso ajude a evoluir o rugby no Brasil e que todo mundo no futuro possa desfrutar da revista também. And for younger fans still getting to know the game, help is at hand from some colourful cartoon characters, both in the magazine and at the games. You can find out much more about the sport and the HSBC Sevens World Series on our website at cnn.com forward slash rugby. Well, that's all from Brazil, where Rugby Sevens is beginning to make an impression on a generation for whom soccer or football was once the only game in town. Rugby is life, rugby is respect, rugby is family. Love rugby. Ah, propaganda, hein? <laughs> <laughs>